They, they are, are presuming to regulate what goes into people's bodies. Therefore, they end up actually physically delving into people's bodies to find these arbitrarily forbidden substances. Tim Young happened in uh, the fall of 2012. David Eckert, uh, January of 2013, were both uh, stopped for alleged traffic violations by members of the Border Task Force. The Border Task Force, which is made up of local law enforcement agents, receives federal dollars through a program called Operation Stone Garden to fight the drug war along the Mexican border. We're running Operation Stone Garden along the U.S. border for a long time, and, and they continue to give funds to local governments in order to arrest their own citizens and, and subject them to these humiliating searches. Timothy Young lives in Deming, New Mexico with his wife and three children. In October 2012, Young was pulled over by Deputy Javier Peru in Lordsburg, a town about an hour west of Deming. I was, already, I was at the Plan J, so we just stopped to get gas. I had a friend of mine along. Uh, I exited the vehicle. He's uh, Deputy Peru. He stated that I needed to get back in the vehicle, ask him what, what it was for, what was going on. He stated, uh, we're not using my turn signal. When Hidalgo County Sheriff's found an open container belonging to Young's companion in the car, Young consented to a search of his truck that lasted for more than two hours. But he didn't tell you where the stuff said in No. He said that, he said as far as he knows that there's nothing in here. They said they were going to bring a canine in. I said, well, you know what, that's fine. Dog's not going to hit on your vehicle? I don't know what the dog's going to do. If you want it to do it, I guess it could. Is he, uh, well, I mean, the dogs will don't do it because he wants to. Well, it depends on who trains it. Well, we have, a, we have a pretty good dog with our department. Well, I mean, now, it, it, has there been any drugs inside that vehicle? And there's no drugs in there now? There is. Y'all put them in there. <laughs> that we put them in there? Because I ain't got none. That's what I'm saying. There are a whole bunch of studies that find that most of the time when they alert, there is, in fact, no contraband. So uh, that rate may range from 56% to 96%. But th those are very big error rates. The dog don't bite, does it? I don't like him. He scared the shit out of me. <laughs> but it wasn't until last year, in one of these cases out of Florida, that the Supreme Court explicitly said, if a well-trained police dog alerts to a car, that in itself is enough to justify a search. You guys checked him real good? No, not yet. Um, he banged on the driver's seat inside the vehicle, and then also on the center console inside the vehicle. So, proof. But you, probably, you didn't do a real thorough pat down right on it. Right. The dog banged on the seat and the center console. Okay. While sheriffs sought a warrant to search Young's person, Deputy Patrick Green continued to interrogate Young. Do you have it up your ass? Do I have it up? What, what kind of fucking question is that? It's an honest question. Have what up my ass? Do you have drugs in your ass? Do you want to be faggot with me or what? Do you have drugs in your ass? Do you have some in your ass? The Timothy Young case raises a lot of questions, including an obvious one. Why would Young, or anyone not crossing a border or traveling by plane, put drugs in his anal cavity? <laughs> I have no fucking clue. <laughs> so it's crazy. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. The sheriffs got a warrant and transported Young to the Gila Regional Medical Center an hour away in Silver City, New Mexico. I x-rayed my stomach, I x-rayed my pelvic area and they didn't find nothing. It was negative, okay? That being said, they still took me back to the, to the uh, ER, the officers present. Um, they said they were gonna do an uh, uh, anal finger exam. As soon as he penetrated, they laughed. After not finding nothing in the stool, but stool, then they still kept me handcuffed. And I rode handcuffed all the way that hour drive back down to Lordsburg, where they took me back to my truck and had no choice but to release me. It's probably about three or four weeks after, after the fact, and I go to the mailbox and open the mailbox, and there's a bill from Hila Regional Medical Center for that night that we're speaking on. And, and it, I laughed. I mean, that's all I could do was laugh. I wanted to cry, but I just laughed. Just a few months later, New Mexico cops set their sights on another anal cavity. David Eckert was pulled over in the Walmart parking lot in Deming for failing to come to a complete stop at a stop sign. Eckert was interrogated, 
and when he refused to allow officers to search his car, he didn't know that he was about to be detained and tormented for 14 hours. Hidalgo County Deputy Sheriffs Arredondo and Green, the two members of the Border Task Force who were also involved in the Young case, arrived on the scene with the dog, Leo. A dog was brought in. The police officer claimed that the dog alerted. We have a dispute about that. And that was enough to get a warrant um, to search this guy and his innards. The first hospital they went to, the, the, the doctors didn't have anything to do with it. They said, this doesn't seem ethical to us. So they went to another hospital and they're like, oh sure, we'll do it. They gave him three enemas to prepare him for a colonoscopy because he had eaten. And so, so they wanted to clear what they were going to search. And he was just humiliated. They also did just a sort of what they call a digital examination of his rectum, which does not involve computers. It's, you know, they used to put their fingers up his butt, basically. They're basically, you know, anally raping him. Um, and every one of these uh, uh, searches fails to find any contraband. Timothy Young and David Eckert brought suits against everyone involved. So far, Young has been awarded $925,000 from Hidalgo County, and David Eckert has been awarded $1.6 million from Hidalgo County and the city of Deming. And who exactly is paying for these judgments? And, uh, judgment against them is paid for by the local government, uh, either in direct funds or in increased premiums for their insurance policies. So the taxpayer is going to be paying for these judgments. If I would have done that to somebody else, you think I'd be held accountable? You're darn right I'd be held accountable. I would have a rape charge sitting in jail right now because that's what it is. Of course, but for the war on drugs, all of these actions would be treated as crimes. We would, we would view the police and the doctors who were involved um, in these actions as criminals, rightly so. The district attorney's office actually approved the warrant, so there's no accountability as far as that goes. Uh, there's no way that my client can get these officers disciplined or fired. So there's no method to do that other than the, the sheriff or the, the chief of police, and that hasn't been done as far as we know. So there has been no accountability for the officers, and that's, that's a sad reality of what's happened. You know, fundamentally, when you look at, at, a, at a situation like the search of David Eckert, what was this all about? Even assuming the dog was well-trained, even if they did everything correctly, even if they found drugs, it's about putting a human being through a kind of torture, this humiliating, awful, painful experience, so that you can find this arbitrarily prescribed chemical. Then you'd be held accountable. And normally, I, I wouldn't be on this camera. <laughs> but it's got to stop somewhere. It does have to stop somewhere.